everybody. Hey girls, I've got a question for you. How have you guys been dealing with the pandemic? A panda? We don't have a panda. No, silly Quinn. Gus means a pan. A pan that you- No, 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 no. Not a pan. Not a panda. The pandemic. You know, like the coronavirus, the COVID-19, the pandemic. Don't well, you know what a pandemic is? No, not really. Maybe we should learn about pandemics. Let's learn about pandemics. Yeah. A pandemic is an outbreak of an infectious disease that spreads across a large area. An example could be a continent and sometimes even worldwide. During a pandemic, infectious disease will easily spread from person to person. The disease causes serious illness and can sweep across the country and around the world very quickly. However, before it becomes a pandemic, it's an epidemic first. An epidemic is when a disease spreads from person to person faster than doctors can manage to control it. Here is an easy way to tell the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic. Just remember the letter P and the word pandemic. The word passport also starts with a P. With a passport, you can travel across the world just like a pandemic, not an epidemic. So, how does a pandemic happen? Pandemics usually happen when a new disease develops the ability to spread rapidly. A new virus strain or subtype of a virus that can easily transmit between humans can be the cause of a pandemic. Bacteria can also become resistant to antibiotic or treatments with medicines, which can also cause the rapid spread. And this is due to little natural resistance to the actual disease, causing it to easily spread from person to person. Humans may have little to no protection against a new virus. Luckily, a new virus usually cannot spread between animals and people. So what is more dangerous, a pandemic or epidemic? A pandemic will affect a much higher number of people and can also be more deadly than an epidemic. Pandemics can also lead to a lot of changes that many times are not good, such as financial loss for large areas as well as hardships on a much larger scale. Can animals spread a virus or diseases that can cause a pandemic? Animals do carry some diseases, but fortunately, they rarely spread to humans. That's a good dog. <laughs> but sometimes they can and these viruses will mutate and can be passed to people and then spread even further. You see, when an animal virus passes to a person, health professionals will quickly study it as it could lead to a possible pandemic. And when an animal virus does affect humans, it is believed to be mutating and might become highly contagious as well as harmful to people. So now you might ask if you've ever experienced a time during a pandemic or epidemic. Well, first, a seasonal flu epidemic usually happens when subtypes from a flu virus have already traveled between people. But a novel subtype will commonly cause pandemics. These subtypes will not have circulated to humans ever before. 
The most recent example of a pandemic is actually COVID-19, which is currently still happening at the time of this video. This is a new illness caused by an unknown coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2. COVID-19 will enter a person's body when the virus gets on their hands, then they touch their mouth, nose, or even eyes. People who have COVID-19 might have a cough, a fever, as well as difficulty taking deep breaths. Some people, like children, who may even have the virus, might not feel sick at all, or it will seem just like they might have a small cold. You see, a virus is so small that you can't even see it with your eyes. And this is why it's so important to wash your hands a lot throughout the day and try not to touch your mouth, your nose, or your eyes. Here are a few other examples of pandemics or epidemics that have happened in the past. In 2002, the SARS coronavirus outbreak was a viral pneumonia epidemic that took the lives of over 770 people worldwide. This SARS outbreak happened because of a new coronavirus that had an unknown source for how it started. Most of the infection started in China and eventually spread to Hong Kong as well as other countries throughout the world. In 2009, there was the swine flu. The swine flu was an outbreak that caused between 151,700 people to 575,400 people to die around the world. The swine flu was caused by another virus called the H1N1 virus. The virus began in pigs. Then it eventually spread through human to human contact. Strangely enough, during this pandemic, it was discovered that many people aged 60 and older already had antibodies against this virus from previous flu outbreaks that they may have had already and had already beaten. So this led to a larger infection in children and young adults. In 2012, MERS coronavirus caused a disease that gave people a severe respiratory illness. The MERS outbreak was caused by a coronavirus that spread from an unknown animal source to people. This outbreak originated in Saudi Arabia and was contained primarily to the Arabian Peninsula. This MERS outbreak had a much higher mortality rate than previous coronavirus outbreaks. The mortality rate was 34%. It took the lives of over 850 people. Then, in 2014, the Ebola outbreak took the lives of 11,300 people, primarily in West Africa. The 2014 Ebola outbreak happened because of an Ebola virus that is thought to have been transmitted from bats to humans. The outbreak started in West Africa, but it spread to eight other countries as well. But of all the pandemics in recent history, the pandemic of 1918 was the largest. Between 50 to 100 million people are believed to have died. That was as much as 5% of the world's entire population. 500 million people were infected. Wow. Some have called it the worst pandemic in history. What was remarkably strange was the 1918 flu took the lives of otherwise healthy young adults once they actually got the virus. It didn't affect children and the elderly as much as younger adults. Wow, 
That's a lot of information about pandemics and epidemics. And again, the definition of a pandemic is defined as the worldwide spread of a new disease, according to the WHO. And the World Health Organization, or the WHO, was created in 1948 as part of the United Nations. The WHO's job is to help guide and coordinate health policies throughout much of the entire world. Hey, did you like this video? Hey, did you learn something new? Then don't forget to sub and smash that like button and we'll see you on the next Hey, guess what? Boom!